Now we want to look at the following problem where we want to find um, all horizontal and vertical asymptotes of a given function. So here our function is f of x equals the square root of 9x squared minus x um, all over 2x plus 1. So vertical asymptotes can occur um, where the denominator would be equal to 0. So we see that 2x plus 1 equals 0 when x equals negative a half. So to show that I've got a vertical asymptote there, I'd want to look at the limit as x approaches negative a half. Um, now I see that so I don't have an even power of x here or um, an even power on the outside, it's going to make a difference whether I'm approaching um, negative a half from the left or from the right. So first I'm going to look at the limit as I approach negative a half from the left of 9x squared minus x all over 2x plus 1. Um, and I realize what I'm going to have on the top there is going to be positive because I'm going to have x squared, so that's going to be squaring a negative number, making it positive. And then I'm going to have minus a negative, so that'll be adding a positive. So I'm going to have a positive up here. And if I approach negative a half from the left, I'm going to be thinking about something a little bit smaller than negative a half, which means I'm going to have a negative number down here. So that's going to give me negative infinity. And I see that the limit as I approach negative a half from the right of this quantity of 9x squared minus x over 2x plus 1 is going to give me a positive number again in my numerator. And if I'm approaching negative a half from the right, I'm going to have something a little bit bigger than negative a half, which is going to give me, I should say, small negative here and small positive here, so that my limit will be infinity. So these are both what we call um, infinite limits. Okay. And the fact that I'm approaching um, infinity from one side, negative infinity from the other, shows that I do have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative a half because of these two different infinite limits. So now if I want to consider the question of horizontal asymptotes, I need to think about the problem of finding the limit as I approach infinity. So we need to think about the limit as x goes to infinity of this function. So let's go to the next slide for that. So I want to be looking at the limit, so we found this, x equals negative a half. And now I want to be looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 9x squared minus x all over 2x plus 1. So I'm going to have to figure out how to use um, some algebraic techniques to get this into some kind of form where I have things like 1 over x to the r, which I know go to 0 as x goes to infinity. So somehow I need that to be um, in my limit so far because that's what I know how to take the limit of as x goes to infinity. So some of the tricks here involve doing a little bit of factoring. So I'm going to factor out x squared from here, and we'll see why I'm making this choice. So I'm factoring out x squared times 9 minus, so I want to think about what has to go here so that x squared um, times it would give me back x, and it turns out I need 1 over x there. So I see that if I multiply x squared times 1 over x, I would have x. If I multiply x squared times 9, I would have 9x squared. So this is equivalent to the numerator over there, and this is all divided by um, 2x plus 1. So now this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity. Now we have this rule that says the square root of a product of two values um, is equal to, and this is where we have to be a little bit careful, um, it's actually equal to the square root of the absolute value of the first one times the square root of the absolute value of the second one. And that's because um, if the square root of a times b is defined, um, excuse me, um, then this quantity would be positive, but it, it might be possible for a and b to be negative numbers. So in order to have the product, um, when we do each of these pieces be defined, I need to be looking at the absolute value of each of those pieces. So really I've got this as the um, square root of the absolute value of x squared times the square root of the absolute value of 9 minus 1 over x, all over 2x plus 1. And because what I have under those square roots is in fact positive, I can drop those absolute value bars. So I've got the square root of x squared, because x squared is always positive. And 9 minus um, 1 over x will also be positive. Because I'm going to infinity, I know this part's going to 0, so I'm going to have something like 9 there. So I'm 
can drop those absolute value bars. Okay, so now we have to simplify this a little bit more and we have to use a rule about the square root of um, a number squared. So there's a definition that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. Okay, so using this definition, I'm going to say I've got the absolute value of x now times 9 minus 1 over x, all over 2x plus 1. Okay, but remember our absolute value function is a piecewise function that's x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and negative x if x is less than 0. But since I'm approaching positive infinity, that's just going to be x. Whoops, I need my limit. Limit as x goes to infinity of x times the square root of 9 minus 1 over x. And I'm going to want to get some cancellation going on, so I'm going to factor an x out of what I have in the denominator as well. So I'm going to say I've got x times 2 plus 1 over x. And then I see that those x's cancel. So I'm looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 9 minus 1 over x all over 2 plus 1 over x. And then I see that as x goes to infinity, 1 over x is going to 0. So what I have is the square root of 9 over 2, or 3 halves as my limit. So we've shown that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function here is 3 halves. So that's telling us that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves. So we've found one of the horizontal asymptotes. It's possible that there's another horizontal asymptote, which we would find by looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So that's what we want to look at next. So I want to look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this square root of 9x squared minus x all over 2x plus 1. So that's equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And then we want to use that factoring technique that we showed before. So I'm going to have x squared times 9 minus 1 over x, and that's all under the square root, all over 2x plus 1. And then I know that each of those pieces inside are positive, so I can say this is the square root of x squared times the square root of 9 minus 1 over x, all over 2x plus 1. And again, remember that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, which is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. So here, since we're going to negative infinity, the square root of x squared is equal to negative x. So I have negative x times the square root of 9 minus 1 over x, whoops, all over 2 times x plus 1. So I'm going to factor out an x, x times 2 plus 1 over x. See that those x's cancel, and so I have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative the square root of 9 minus 1 over x, all over 2 plus 1 over x. I know that 1 over x is approaching 0 as x goes to negative infinity, so I've got negative the square root of 9, or negative 3, over 2 as my limit. So this is telling me that I also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3 halves. Okay, what are some key points to notice here? Well, we've got the technique of factoring out x squared, or factoring out an even power so that I'm going to be able to simplify it when I do in this case here, the square root of each of those two pieces. Um, I have this really, 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 really important fact here that comes up um, in various problems, that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. So I have to consider whether the square root of x squared should be x or negative x, depending on the situation that I'm dealing with. Here it was the negative x. Um, the other technique that I used here was to do some factoring on the bottom. Um, another way to think about what I'm doing here instead of to think about factoring out x would be to think about dividing both the numerator and the denominator by x. So if I divided that numerator by x, those x would, x's would cancel. If I divided this denominator here to x plus 1 by x, I'd have 2 plus 1 over x. So that's the same thing that I got here by factoring. So that's another way to think about that part. We see that I got negative 3 halves, which is yet another horizontal asymptote, different than the one that we got before. So just to give you a visual, this is that graph. And so we have here I'm approaching, as x goes to infinity, approaching um, 3 halves. And as I approach um, 
negative infinity, I've got this horizontal asymptote of negative 3 halves. Also notice we had found, excuse me, this vertical asymptote here of x equals negative a half. So this gives you an example of a kind of um, algebra that we'll often do in these problems. Um, we'll talk about more um, problems using these techniques um, in addition to um, a few other techniques in class. Let me know if you have any questions.